Good morning, everyone. We continue now in the first chapter of the Gospel of John. Um, and this is, uh, it's a long chapter and it's taken us quite a few weeks to get through it. A lot of doctrinal things there in the beginning, the incarnate uh, Word of God there, uh, certainly the most important. And we've taken a little excursus on the doctrine of the Trinity as well, which uh, we will see more of these things as we go through. Um, we are here at the calling of some of the disciples. This is the first call um, uh, as as. Jesus has just been uh, baptized by John the Baptist here uh, at the end of um, uh, verse 34 and then in verse 35 is where we're going to pick up uh, right after we pray. So Heavenly Father, we ask your Holy Spirit to descend upon us, open our eyes and hearts to your word that we might understand it and that we might live it. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. So here it says, and I have seen and bore witness that this is the Son of God. That's verse 34 of chapter 1. And then in verse 35 we begin, and the next day. So obviously, chronologically speaking, this moves on to the next day. Again, John was standing with two of his disciples. Now they had come out and followed John, and he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. So uh, Jesus doesn't call them technically here, but John points to Jesus as the Lamb of God. And apparently, however this is, we're, we're left to some degree to um, uh, figure this out. Jesus is going to talk to them in just a, just a second. But the Lamb of God, John had been saying that he is coming, that the Messiah is coming. Um, And when he points to them, the two very quickly leave John to go after Jesus. So um, we understand that as Jesus calls his first group of disciples, now we, we have to remember the words of Paul here, uh, out of 1 Corinthians, consider your calling, not many are noble, not many are mighty. Um, the, the 12 that Jesus called really had no standing in society. In fact, some of them were despised by the Jewish society in particular. Um, fishermen were just basic laborers. Matthew was a tax collector. He was the, the lowest uh, associated uh, with, with the bottom rung and prostitutes, etc. They were nobodies. Um, John was the first testifier of the coming of Jesus Christ. And the next group, like John the Baptist, is really um, unknown to the religious uh, leaders of the day. Uh, They, again, they didn't have seminary degrees. They weren't rabbis. They weren't Pharisees. They weren't um, uh, priests. They weren't Levites. They they were just regular people um, of no real official learning or status. And Jesus calls them, and I think part of that is that, that he might pour into them. Uh, it's very clear that in our weakness we are made strong, and that is his strength. And I believe that was, would be uh, appropriate here in the calling of the first group. So let me read here. Um, The next day again, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. Well, the two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. And Jesus turns to them, saw them following, and said, What are you seeking? Now, what are you seeking in the Greek really is, it talks about motivation. Uh, talks about what, what does your heart desire. That's what Jesus was asking. And they said to him, Rabbi, teacher, where are you staying? Well, the, he doesn't, they don't answer the question uh, about what they're seeking. He wants to, where, you're, where are they staying? And he says, come and see. So they came and saw where he was staying and stayed with him that day, for it was about the 10th hour. Now, they obviously knew John the Baptist, knew they were looking for the Messiah. John the Baptist points him out, and they follow. And right there at the beginning of the ministry. Now, we have to understand geographically um, 
how close all these places are, uh, how much interaction may have been between the villages. Some of the disciples knew one another ahead of time because they were from the same places, uh, but they don't seem to have any idea who Jesus is. Now, he's lived in the area for 30 years, basically, um, but he has lived in obscurity. Now, it could be that... Um, um, John the Baptist knew him when he showed up, um, but it could be that somehow his, um, uh, and this, these are just my terms, his divinity was somehow obscured during those years uh, that no one other than maybe Mary and Joseph knew who he really was um, just because of their experience uh, at his, uh, uh, his um uh, the announcement of the angels and of course his birth um, and perhaps nobody else really knew or maybe he just was so humble that nobody paid any attention to him but they didn't seem to know him uh, these men who come from the same area um, so and, and uh, so in this small area of, of Galilee Jesus, Jesus has been there lived there they didn't know who he was um, now remember, in this calling on this time, this is not the, the permanent disciple calling, apostle calling. That's really, there's, there's some time here where they just come and follow him. And he says that on, on quite a few instances, come and follow me. Um, and, and, and they do. They drop everything, they go and, and follow him. But it's not really as apostles yet that we'll see that later in the book, I think, maybe 18 months uh, time frame where we get to the first actual use of that word. So uh, verse 39, he said, come and you will see. So they came and they saw where he was staying and he stayed with him that day for it was about the 10th hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. So he first found his own brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which means Christ. Now, Messiah and Christ, that's the anointed one. So the one that the Old Testament foretold would come. And, and, and he hasn't spent much time with him yet, but obviously he has this conviction that this is the one we have been waiting for. So he, and that would be Andrew, brought him, brought Peter to Jesus. And Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, the son of John. Now, it could be John or uh, uh, Jonas, or it could be a lot of translations. John will be good enough for, for where we are and, and what we're doing today. You're the son of John. You shall be called Cephas, which means Peter. So Jesus is not identifying him so much as who he is, as who he will be. Now, Peter is a hothead. He's a hardhead. Um, he is uh, a leader, um, but he has a lot to learn. And like many of our children who were very strong-willed, if we can just get them to where they need to be, they're going to do great things. Well, the same thing with Peter. Uh, it would take three years uh, to get Peter where he needed to be. And then on uh, that first sermon after Pentecost, we see... Um, his great uh, ability once he's filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, Peter has some problems even after that as Paul confronts him about some of his behaviors, but Peter is also, by that time, humble enough to be shaped and corrected. So Peter has a, Jesus is identifying him as what he will be, and, and we understand that Peter means rock or stone, and um, at Caesarea Philippi, it's the confession of Peter that he builds the church on that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. It's not Peter the rock is not what the church is built on. It's the, that confession, Christ is the Son of God. Um, so let's, let's continue here in, in the calling of the next two. This is Philip and Nathaniel. Nathaniel is also known as Bartholomew. He's probably better known as Bartholomew. So the next day, this is an, obviously another chronologically speaking, the next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. 
Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And here's the classic line, Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? So um, this might be maybe some... Um, civil rivalry uh, maybe Nazareth was just known as a nasty place um, that that nothing there were no good people in there um, you know each state has another state in, in our country that they make fun of they have jokes about them and uh, living in southwestern Pennsylvania we made jokes about West Virginia West Virginia made jokes about Pennsylvania uh, that's this the way it was maybe he looks at Nazareth and goes hey that's this the bad side of of the country nothing good comes out of there and Philip says to him well come and see come and see and you will find out Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him behold an Israelite indeed in him there is no deceit now this is a a phrase which really talks about a true Jew or a true Israelite, one who is a Jew inwardly. So when he sees Nathanael coming, he can, in a sense, see that he is a man of faith and a man of true faith as far as he knows relative to the Jewish faith. Um, this is not, he's not a hypocrite. He's not one of the Pharisees like a whitewashed tomb. No, in his heart, he is one uh, who is true and faithful. Behold an Israelite indeed in whom there is no deceit. And Nathaniel asked the question, well, how do you know me? You know, even though this is a small area and, and they possibly could have run into each other throughout their lives, there are still the questions, how do you know me? And this might be even a deeper sense of knowing rather than just the physical. But how do you know my heart in the midst of this? And Jesus answered, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. So this is part of the divinity of Christ. I saw you there. Now, Jesus wasn't there under the fig tree, so he knew he was there. Uh, so this is a small taste, a small uh, introduction into um, what Jesus is capable of doing. And Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, which means teacher, you are the son of God, you are the king of Israel. Just because he saw him under the tree and, and he wasn't there but knew he was in there and what he's, he has heard, he makes this declaration. And Jesus answered him, because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? Just, just because of that? Maybe somebody told me you were sitting under a fig tree. He says, but you'll see greater things than this. Greater things. And, and Jesus is, uh, because we can look backwards in time, we think Jesus is referring to the, um, the miraculous things that they will see Jesus do, the feeding of the 5,000, uh, the healings, uh, raising of the dead. I mean, all of these things, these, this is what Jesus is referring to. You thought... That was significant. Wait till you see the real ministry and the real miraculous things that I will do is part of that ministry. Um, so he's pointing to there and he's pointing to those days uh, when there'll be much more to see rather than just what they've seen so far. You will see greater things than these. And he said to them, truly, truly, and, and Jesus, that's a phrase Jesus uses over 20 times in the New Testament, truly, truly. So it's um, for sure, for sure, um, really, really um, pay close attention. When Jesus says truly, truly, uh, that is supposed to get our attention and draw it upon what he is about to say. Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. That's a, that's a, a very important statement because it ends with the Son of Man. Um, now we will look at that phrase um, later as we study uh, the Gospel of John. 
the Son of Man is, is Jesus' favorite title for himself, and we think of it as a title of humanity because it's the Son of Man, but you will see once we, we dig into it, it's really much more of a title of divinity because it goes back to the prophet Daniel uh, and Jesus, but they don't understand what it means uh, as Jesus uses it. Um, uh, so it's, it, it's a, it'll be a great time to, to explore how Jesus is communicating who he is in the simple phrase, the son of man. So you're going to see these things you're going to see heaven open, the gates, uh, the angels of God ascending and descending. Um, so they knew Moses. Remember that these are Jews. They knew Moses. They knew the Pentateuch. They knew the law. They knew the writings. They knew the prophecies about the Messiah. And so far in this little interaction that they've had with Jesus. Um, now this is over the course of two days here. And then we don't have the entire conversation. Remember John writes, I've only written uh, these things uh, so that you will believe but there are things that will fill many other books that Jesus did that he has not written not recorded but what we have here is so that we will believe all of what they know about Jesus squares up so far with the prophecies of the Old Testament relative to the coming of the Messiah uh, he, they knew he's the son of God uh, it, it, as far as they could now, that'll be further revealed as we get into the gospel. He is the Messiah, the one that they have been waiting for. And Jesus says, well, just wait and see. Uh, this will be confirmed even to a greater degree as you see the heavens open and the angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. So that takes us through the first chapter of John. Um, and we'll get into the first miracle next week. And that's at the wedding of Cana. And we'll see you then.